Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Cape Town, South Africa, where as usual, I've done my best possible job of bringing the British weather with me. It's been raining all day, it is now super windy, but nonetheless, today we've got an exciting topic to be discussing. I think it's about time to think about adding another V12 back to the collection. I'm gonna take you through the possibilities, the options that it might be, but today I'm visiting Aston Martin Cape Town, who are very kindly letting me take this out for a drive during my time here, a Vanquish Volante with a lot of very, very special Q options. Now I'm going to take you for a whiz around the car before we jump in and go drive, but also McLaren Cape Town. There is an extraordinary McLaren Senna in there. The spec on that thing is crazy. So let's have a quick look through the showrooms before we jump in the Vanquish, go out for a drive and start thinking about what could be arriving in the garage. Before you ask, I'm keeping my sunglasses on with fingers crossed that the sun is going to come out later on and we can enjoy the car with the roof down. Now let's just take a quick introduction to this very special Vanquish. But before I do, you might remember that the last V12 car that I actually bought was a Vanquish Volante. Nowhere near the Q options though that you can see on this car in particular. If we just come round to take a look at the front, it has an exposed carbon fibre stripe all the way up the front towards the windscreen. The interior, you might have spotted of course, is spicy red. Take a look at that with all of the quilting that you have around the car, the finishes and the brightness of it contrasting against the dark metallic silver on the exterior. You get the Q badges down here as well when you have this level of modification and customization. Aston Martin's Q of course taking things completely off the regular menu. So we're going to be hearing that and driving it very shortly. But before we do, let's come through and take a look at this Senna. There are Sennas and then there are Sennas. Take a look at this car. Now it is very cool for me to be here and to be able to see it because I've seen many pictures of this on Instagram but here we are, a highly MSO'd example. Now the main body colour is Myra Orange with the blue accents, that was the launch configuration but this has kind of dialed it up a notch beyond that. So for example, normally the whole canopy of the Senna would be gloss black so these A-pillars, the T-bar across the top, the hinge mount points and the roof snorkel, those would normally be black so through MSO those have been painted in body colour. You can also spot the extension of all the blue accents, the pinstripe around the roof snorkel, the end plate on the ginormous wing, the centre lock there on the wheel, the brake calipers. If we come down here as well, the pinstripe that runs along the side skirt and also around the front splitter. And on the inside at the front, you have the active aero flaps as well as the fender inners, all in the light blue to contrast. But have a look at the interior. The seat pads, the top rolls of the doors, the steering wheel, the dashboard, all in a blue to match the exterior, and of course, with the glass doors where you can see the seats straight through the doors. So very, very cool to see this car here at McLaren Cape Town, having seen it on the internet before. In here, we have the DB11 V8 in saffron, a very strong color choice, but of course with that four liter bi-turbo V8 from AMG, the same engine that you find in that, the new Vantage, with its lovely design to the rear. The front has always been a bit peculiar for many people, but there is actually something interesting about that. Now that we've seen the launch of the AMRB003 and also the Vanquish Vision concept, you can see how on the sportier cars they have that traditional Aston Martin shape to the upper section but the grille isn't entirely enclosed as on the front of the DB11 or on the older Vantage or on the previous generation DBS and this really is an icon. It's such a good looking car. It's certainly going to be a timeless classic for sure, that generation of DBS. The new DBS needs some time I think to establish itself but that is going to be something we're going to be talking about as well. For now though, the sun has slightly come out a little bit. It's looking very nice out there, so hopefully we can keep the roof down and take this out to see what it's about. Small distraction, talking about V12s, the Vanquish S. That's such a good sound. I think that's going to go into the showroom after I leave. Another timeless car, but the noise this thing makes. Case in point. <laughs> That's what we're talking about today. Anyway, for the moment, let me climb into this car, all rigged up. We've got the valet key here rather than the crystal key. Oh look, you have carbon fiber door handles as well um, on the Q version of it, as well as some new interior parts here. Um, the Q designation there and also some extra leather parts, but key in the dashboard. Let's fire it into life. Yeah, we do. And that, 
alone is why the V12 is quite so fantastic. So let's go drive then, because that's basically what we're here to do, and the scenery around here is stunning. This car, like my old Vanquish, has the eight-speed auto, so we will pop it into drive. You have the fly-off handbrake down here. You can pop up the wind deflector at the rear as well, which where we're gonna head will just make things slightly uh, less breezy. Now, we're talking V12s. That of course has the uh, exhaust valve closed and we had some sunshine there for a brief millisecond. We have three main options to think about. The first is of course the Aston Martin DBS, the successor to this car, the follow-up to the Vanquish. It has the reworked 5.2 litre twin turbocharged V12. It's not a naturally aspirated engine that was found in the DB11, but for the DBS, it makes 725 horsepower and 900 newton meters of torque. The other two options come from a small Italian town called Maranello. That's right, Ferrari. We have the 812 Superfast and the GTC4 Lasso V12. Now both of those have Ferrari's naturally aspirated V12s. The 812 has a 6.5 litre with 800 horsepower and the GTC4 Lasso has a 6.3 litre with 690 horsepower. All of these cars are way too powerful to be completely honest than what anybody really wants but they all have slightly different seating configurations. The, the Superfast is a strict two-seater, two-seat Grand Tourer, Super GT, I mean, they're basically all the Super GTs. The DBS is a two plus two. There's some space in the back for luggage, but you're not really going to fit a grown person back there. And then you also have the GTC4 Lusso, which has a surprising amount of rear leg space, and you can comfortably have four people. Now, many of you guys will remember my other V12 in the not too distant past was, of course, the Ferrari FF. I loved that car. I owned it for about two years and three months, did around 20,000 miles in it. Many memories, many epic journeys. It was a support car. It was a supercar in its own right. You could drive that thing hard on a mountain road and it disguised its size and weight incredibly well. So the FF, I always thought I would follow up with a GTC4 Lusso. Having not really had a four seat car of that ilk since and basically just used my AMG GTR for the purpose, I haven't really missed not having the back seat. Sometimes I've taken one of the focuses, like to the Geneva Motor Show, when many of you would have liked to have seen me taking, um, you know, something a little bit more wild than a Focus RS. Of course, the G63 will serve some of the off-roading and four-wheel drive requirements that you'd get out of the GTC4 Lasso. But basically, we've got DBS, Superfast, and GTC4 Lasso, all of which have these glorious V12 engines that just sing and sing and sing, as I think we're gonna be able to experience here in a moment. If I just go out of uh, drive and pull the panel, there we go, we go into first, and in the light, I can't really see, but now we're in touch, so now we're just going to be using the flappy paddles. Um, that truck knows more than I do. There we go. First gear, listen to this. Oh, we've got exhaust valves. There we go. Yes. I miss that. I miss that a lot. That is a good sound. So, V12 engines. Why a V12 engine? You know I love my V8s. I've got the GT8 with an actually aspirated V8. I've got the LT in the center with twin turbo V8 mid-engine cars. I've got the AMG GTR with a front, a front mid uh, twin turbo V8. But a V12 is a V12. They're a dying breed. We're not gonna be able to own these engines forever. So if you're somebody like me and you know you want another one at some point, the next generation won't have them. The next generation cars might not have them. Ferrari's replacement to the A12 might not have one of those. The next Aston DBS or DB11 successor, the DB12, maybe it's a bit early to say that. How ironic would that be if the DB12 didn't have a V12 in it? So, yeah, is now the time to do it? Is now the time to add another V12 to the garage? That's what we're gonna have to decide, and at the moment, I'm not entirely sure. I'm very quickly talking myself into doing this, and I think the scenery and road has a part to play in that, a pretty uh, significant factor, even if we're not going that quickly. Just to be able to hear the sound of this, I'm missing my old Vanquish, honestly. I didn't think this would actually bring back so much of that feeling of the car driving it again. There's nothing quite like this sound. And yes, the FF and my Vanquish made their sounds in very different ways. They made completely different tones, if we could call it that, the way they revved as well. The Ferrari scream and rev up incredibly quickly. The Aston is a much lazier engine and a deeper grumble to it without the same 
kind of instant response, but both of them are so, so, so special. And I mean, I drove the Vanquish S as well, and maybe that would be an option, maybe that's an option I should bring to the table. The DBS has a lot of that sound, but not quite all of it. Not quite every bit. The turbos do slightly mute it, and I, I felt that when I drove it, it sounded very good. No uh, discrediting it for that, it sounded very, very good indeed. <laughs> Just a moment, look at this scenery. Look at how beautiful this is. I love South Africa, I love Cape Town. Every time coming down here, the roads, the scenery, and now the weather. I hoped it was going to brighten up, and it has done. The other thing is naturally aspirated engines. That's a whole topic on its own, you know? Why does the Speciale hold so much more value compared to, say, the Pista or the 488? Because it's a dying breed. We're not going to have these naturally aspirated engines, V8, V12s, V10s, like the Hurricane still manages to have at this moment in time. But what's going to be the next generation for that? These new Aston Martins, you know, the supercars, the AMRB003, is going to have a turbo hybrid V6. It's Aston Martin's own engine, but it's downsizing. It's no longer going to be this glorious, I don't know how to describe the heavenly V12. There's one big thing though, very specifically to this car. The noise is quite so good because of course it's a convertible. There is no roof, which means I get to hear and enjoy all of the glory of it, which none of the other cars that I've mentioned would do. There will, I guess, be a Volante version of the DBS. There might be a convertible version of the 812 as a particularly highly limited edition, which I have no chance of ever being able to buy, even though that would probably be my dream car. The Lusso, of course, is a four-seater, so no convertible version of that. Um, no, not even remotely going to be anything like that. So that's quite a view. What a way to arrive here in South Africa, where I thought this day was going to be a miserable, wet, gloomy write-off. Yet here we are beside this amazing road, oh, as a camper goes past, with this. A huge thanks to Daytona and the team there at Aston Martin South Africa, because this is the perfect car for this road. And it is truly making me want to add another car like it back into the collection. I'm just gonna head back over to it for a moment, because in the sunshine, this interior, the spicy red, with the red brake calipers, I mean, yes, it's it's extreme, there's no question. It is intense when you look at it, especially in this light, but it's really cool. Hey, just got spotted <laughs> as I was filming here. Um, yes, it is, it is a wild interior, but I actually really like it, especially against the more subtle exterior that this car's wearing as well. Um, yeah, what a drive. What? I'm just having the absolute time of my life right now, and uh, I hope some of that comes across. So big thanks to these guys. But I would be interested to know what you think. What car, or sh should I, shouldn't I? What car? I don't know. Hmm, hmm. It's gonna be a really hard choice. I would love to drive back to back DBS, the 812 and the Lusso, because I think really those are the three that stand out to me. In terms of usability, clearly the Lusso is number one, then the DBS, then the 812. I say that, but the 812 actually has a lot of luggage space. Um, in terms of noise, I think the Ferraris just clinch it, and part of this is about the noise. Um, oh, we're really clutching at straws, they're all epic cars. Just what do you think? What do you think, like, should Lusso to follow the FF, 812 to do something new, two-seat Ferrari GT, DBS to follow my old Vanquish, or none, because this is all frivolous and silly, which might be the most logical answer. I'm kind of constantly looking over my shoulder to see what cars are going by, because I've seen some really random and interesting stuff. A Cobra went by as well before I was filming. So it seems you don't really know what's going to appear. Um, but yeah, just random musings on a lovely day out now in the sunshine in South Africa. As I was saying, oh, listen to that. Well, that's a V8. Did sound good though. And there goes a Jimny. I love the Jimny. It's so cool. If you notice the cameras wobbling around, this is something I remember from my Vanquish. It's just the frequency of this car seems to set them off completely. But now that we get to accelerate. <laughs> so good. Oh, that's cool. Nice Mustang there. Convertible V12 experience is definitely something pretty mega. Only we can have this forever. Do you know what I might do those? Pull in. You don't actually need to pull in, but I'm going to pull in just to pop the roof up for a second. To compare it to the more realistic options on this list. Into park. Now the button goes that way, he says. Yeah, there we go. 
fabric soft top is going to fold over and I know from experience that you kind of have to duck a little bit otherwise it's uh, basically on your head it's not exactly the most spacious car ever but that's what makes it look so good the rake of the windscreen everything tucking in there we go okay done just like that and out we go again back into drive or pull the paddle for first gear out we go to the road now let's hear what it's like with all the windows closed I can tell you it's quite, it's quite quiet and refined no, you still got that. That's what you're gonna get with the uh, the 812 or the Lusso or the DBS. I have the maddest of cravings right now for a V12, for another one of these fantastic engines, six liters, that kind of thing. Yes, they might not be the most fuel efficient, but, oh wow, that view. I was gonna say, but it doesn't necessarily sometimes matter because we're about to move to an era of electrification, autonomy, Basically cars that you don't own, you rent and jump in and they turn up at your door and take you where you need to go. And I think we should treasure this period we have right now before all of that goes into complete lockdown and we don't have the option. And that is why I'm so tempted on this right now. Look at this, look at this scenery. Magnificent. What a beautiful place to be driving in such a beautiful car as well. All types of vehicles here. G63, just about everything. Bikes, cars, as you can imagine, and a Vanquish Volante currently with the roof down. And a very, very noisy bike. We've actually just been chatting. We pulled in, we're talking about the Aston. But this location, I'm sorry if I sound a bit like a broken record, is really special. So that is why I'm just enjoying this experience of this day. But we can't let a video about a V12 car go by, <laughs> as we listen to that without at least once looking actually at the V12. So I think it's down here in the passenger footwell, but I'm probably about to be proven wrong. Yep, there we go, there's the catch. Just give that a good pull. We can come around and have a look at the engine inside the Aston with that carbon fiber around the badge. I pull the catch underneath, there we go. Lift that up, what a beauty. Six liter, naturally aspirated V12. That is stunning. In fact, this is remarkably clean at the moment, the way it's presented with the top covers underneath the uh, strut braces over the top. Looking absolutely beautiful. So, is it time? That's the topic of today's video. Is it time, as we look at all this carbon fibre as well on the underside of the bonnet, is it time for another V12 in the garage? I think I can safely say that today has made me a little bit miss my one of these and my FF. So we're down to that short list roughly is there something else i haven't thought about that i should be considering you guys often think of these things as much as i do so do let me know in the comments down below should i be leaping for it and getting on with it should i be buying something that's going to be a keeper or should i buy something to use like i've used the amg gtr uh, in recent times of course the amg gtr's successor the gtr pro is a less usable car and i know um this is all like i said a bit frivolous and a bit over the top but i'm also partly growing a car collection and i drive pretty much every day in a car somewhere so in some form it can slightly be justified via a lot of man maths in the head and at the end of the day that's sometimes what it's all about anyway today has been epic so far it's a big thanks to the team at aston martin in cape town for the opportunity to drive this car so do check them out i'll pop all the links down below to daytona to them and to the guys who have worked or who worked to make it possible for this to happen as well so thank you very much for watching guys i look forward to reading your comments down below let's see what you suggest and we'll go from there thanks again cheers